Hi there, I'm still wearing this uh, Sindoor because I'm back from the temple because Navratri and Vijayadashmi are upon us. So Navratri and Vijayadashmi are the prime examples of how unique and diverse Hinduism really is. Navratri means nine nights in the Ashwini or Kartika month according to the Hindu calendar. And during Navratri we celebrate uh, Adipara Shakti or Goddess Durga in all her nine forms. And it culminates in Vijayadashmi, which is the day on which Goddess Durga beheads the evil Asura named Mahishasura. Because, well, where else in the world do you see 10 entire days dedicated to celebrating and worshipping the different forms of uh, Goddess Durga or Adi Parashakti or the feminine primordial energy and it's not done in association or connection with any other gods it's just pure feminine energy that we extol and worship for this 10 days that is quite unique and it is diverse because one uh, on the day of Vijayadashmi there are three different reasons why we celebrate Vijayadashmi and each of them corresponds to each era and two every region in this subcontinent has their own way and tradition of celebrating Vijayadashmi and Navratri and they don't even look like the same celebration and I come from Kerala so Navratri and Vijayadashmi are really important for the people of Kerala and uh, there are a lot of celebrations and pujas done in temples especially uh, temples dedicated to Durga Devi or any goddesses for that matter. The nine days of Navaratri corresponds to the three gunas or qualities of human nature. So the first three days are Tamas, the next three days are Rajas and the last three days are Sattva. So in the last three days we do Durga Puja and then we go on to worship Saraswati Devi who stands for knowledge and sattva and enlightenment and so on. On the day of Durga Puja, what we do is we take all our books, our tools, uh, weapons and all kinds of things that we uh, study, do our job with or engage in any kind of productive activity and we present that to the goddesses. And for the next three days until Vijayadashmi, we don't do anything basically. It's full on holidays and chilling over here, no work and no study. And then on the day of Vijayadashmi, we uh, wake up in the morning and cleanse ourselves and go to the temple or go to where we have presented uh, the things and we pray to the goddess for good health and good knowledge and everything and then we retrieve our uh, tools and books and so on and go on with our life and Vijayadashmi is also the day when we introduce young children as young as four five or six to the world of knowledge it is called as Vidhyarambam which means the beginning of knowledge uh, and it could be and we would be introducing them to the first letters or the first notes of music or anything for that matter but Vijayadashmi is considered as the best time to introduce young children to knowledge and to the world of learning and studying and uh, being creative and so on. So that is how important Navratri and Vijayadashmi are for Malayalis but we do not immerse idols in water as is done in many different parts of India and we also don't emulate Ravana's figurines to commemorate Rama's victory over Ravana during the battle. I'm sure I'm diluting this. There could be a lot more celebrations and a lot more things that we do in Navaratri and Vijayadashmi. If there are, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, I'm very eager to know more about that. So as I said before, Vijayadashmi is the 10th day after the Navaratris. And there are three distinct reasons why Vijayadashmi is so important. And, the, and these three instances corresponds to three eras according to the Indian mythology. And so the first 
story is the story of Maheshwara Mardini, and that goes like this. So Maheshwara is a bovine asura, uh, more like Kai from Kofu Panda Three. So he prayed to Brahma for a boon, and the boon that he asked was that he may not be killed by any male of any species. So. And then once he got the moon, he went straight to Devaloka and made all the devas flee. And they all got so spooked, they went to the Trimurthis and the Trimurthis created Goddess Durga. And Goddess Durga, surprise, surprise, is a woman, so she can kill Mahishasara. And after a constant battle of nine nights, she was able to behead Mahishasara. And that is celebrated as Vijayadashmi, which is the victory of good over evil in the universe. <laughs> Dasara etymologically means thus, which is ten, and Hara means defeat. So Dasara means the defeat of one with ten heads. And who has ten heads? Ramana. A very significant thing is that Dasara and uh, Navratri coincide. And is there a reason for that? Well, legend has it that uh, Vishnu Bhagavan advised Sri Rama, the reincarnated form of himself, to pray to Durga Devi before going into the battle that led to Ravana's defeat or death. If you want to know more about it, Please pick up a Ramayana and read it. Another important question of Dasara is why does Ravana has 10 heads? Or why should Rama kill a 10 headed Ravana? Well, the number 10 is not taken out of thin air. It actually signifies the 10 qualities of Ravana that makes him evil or sinful. So what are those 10 traits? Well, these are the 10 qualities of Ravana that puts him in direct uh, line of fire <laughs> from Rama. So the inherent lesson in Ramayana or the inherent lesson of Rama killing Ravana is to defeat or annihilate these 10 bad qualities. For what? To reach the supreme uh, or to reach the ultimately reality or Brahma. So that is an important lesson to conquer these 10 qualities that we all have within us during this time of Navratri and Tessera. And by the way, this is very beautifully illustrated in the song from the movie Swadesh. That song is basically the celebration of Ram Leela that happens in most parts of North India. And I really love the song because of how it has portrayed the story of Ramayana and uh, I especially love the part where Shah Rukh Khan is singing so please let me know what you think of the song and if you haven't listened to it please go and listen I think that it's a well written song I don't know if you know of this third reason why we celebrate Vijayadashmi or how the word Vijayadashmi came into being and that has to do with Pandavas defeating Kauravas. So another era has gone by, Treda Yuga has given way to Dwapara Yuga and Pandavas are in exile living uh, disguised lives as part of their penance. There is just one more year remaining for Pandavas to, and where they have to live a disguised life and after which they could return and obviously Kauravas don't like that. So uh, Duryodhana is trying to find where Pandavas are and they come to the Virata kingdom where Pandavas are living and then they declare war on the Virata kingdom. It is on the day of Vijayadashami that Pandavas come out of their disguised forms, uh, collect their weapons from the Shami tree and Arjuna single-handedly defeats the entire Kaurava army and send them running. Arjuna also goes by the name Vijaya, that, therefore Vijayadashami. So that is another very important story behind Vijayadashami. 
but of course the fight goes on and it culminates in kurukshetra war all three of these stories are from different eras in indian mythology but they all have one underlying message or an essence that they are trying to convey through these festivals and what is that message well even though we celebrate these festivals every year and we learn about the stories behind them we often miss the message underlying these stories or mythology or the very essence of the celebrations and festivals every hindu mythology tells us that the 10 heads of ravana are bad but what is bad well these 10 qualities are to be avoided or defeated and as you see in navratri it says that we need to move from tamas to rajas to sattva and beyond we need to conquer these qualities make them make the best out of them and more we need to conquer our base desires fears impulses and the attachment to this physical world and go into the path of knowledge light dharma and self actualization that is the core of hinduism as a philosophy and that is the message that we ought to remember every year or in every instance that we celebrate these festivals so let's remember that message this year and try to follow it so once again happy vijayadashmi and happy dasara and have a wonderful nine nights of navratri i hope you liked this video if you did please hit the like button and comment how you celebrate navratri dasara and vijayadashmi i'm very eager to know from you as well so subscribe to this channel for more content like this have a great time thank you hi guys and here is the first book i have written life in a ziploc bag it's the story of four teens living in a city and the impactful reality of modern life where we often chase love intoxication and adventure does it seem like a story that you would be interested in if so please check it out on amazon or flipkart and it's also available for direct buying from the publisher itself all these links are given in the description grab your copy now thank you